Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the data. Hi, I'm Tim McConaughey, and welcome to The Shortcut. I've had a discussion with a few people in some of the network discords that I'm part of about cloud networking, and the question constantly comes up, which is better, SD-WAN or something like Aviatrix for cloud networking? I guess that's to be expected. I mean, I've spent years learning SD-WAN architecture and design, and now I'm working at Aviatrix. So I have a very specific perspective on both solutions, and it's probably only natural that I get asked this question. You know, the, the TLDR, the, the short answer is that we're kind of comparing apples to oranges. And I, I normally wouldn't even address it because I don't feel like the solutions really even compete in the same space. Except it's a common question that I get a lot. So that's fine. I'll go ahead and try to explain my feelings about it and why I think both of them have kind of a different focus. And finally, I'll, I'll say which one I think fits the cloud networking uh, better. So Aviatrix is a cloud-native, born-in-the-cloud solution to solve cloud problems. It's not focused on things like the best path over the WAN to reach users, how, you know, whether it should take MPLS or internet or, or how those WAN links are performing, um, because it's focused on kind of that visibility, security, route intelligence, throughput within the cloud itself, and then delivering that outside the cloud to the consumers, the, the consumer of the cloud, whoever that is, it's users, uh, on-prem workloads, whatever those are, that's the focus. So Aviatrix is not building complex ideas about colors and transport options. Um, we're not, it's not sending the, the best path um, discovery information uh, over all the WAN links that are available to use because connectivity within the cloud carries a totally different set of challenges than connecting to the cloud over a WAN. SD-WAN is a solution focused on delivering the best consistent transport behavior and the optimization utilization of the WAN links between branches and data centers, uh, data center to data center, user to you know remote user, whatever it is, uh, and then and then offering connectivity to the cloud for users and for on-prem workloads so that they don't have to hairpin through a data center or whatever. So, so Cloud Edge is as far as SD-WAN actually comes into the cloud, meaning that basically um, with an SD-WAN solution, and, the, and any of them, I, I, I know Cisco best, so that's what I uh, you know, put, on the, uh, put on the card, if you will, but this is really a, kind of a blanket statement in my opinion. Uh, you pick an SD-WAN solution, and it basically kind of comes up to the, the Cloud Edge, tosses uh, an SD-WAN router over the side, and you know, connects to the workloads that way. And in, in all cases, it's not, it's not that pretty. SD-WAN is not focused on the cloud networking visibility challenge. It's not focused on uh, kind of within the cloud, beyond that edge connectivity. It's, it's, it gives you connectivity to it, but it's not interested in, this, in solving those problems about visibility, um, encryption, security, so on and so forth, beyond kind of that first step inside the cloud. So it's offering just good enough connectivity to the cloud via some kind of basic IBSEC um, to cloud native good enough network constructs. So bandwidth within the cloud between the workloads is not something that SD-WAN's concerned with. Uh, it's not worried about visibility beyond that cloud edge where the routers live, the SD-WAN routers are at. So encryption and visibility, those are happening at the cloud edge to the WAN, to the on-prem, to the users, not between the cloud workloads that don't pass through those SD-WAN cloud routers. So in the, in the case of AWS, as an example, so the SD-WAN and the visibility ends right here at the TGW, right? They connect to the TGW, the TGW is a black box, the TGW is doing inter-VPC workloads, the SD-WAN is not seeing it, it's not expecting it, it's a black box solution until leaving the cloud basically, or getting to the SD-WAN and leaving the cloud. So, you know, the only thing is kind of being inspected and getting that visibility are your workloads to your on-prem or inner region, inner cloud, wherever you're gonna cross that SD-WAN fabric. And this is similar across other cloud implementations. The SD-WAN's an edge use case with basic IPsec connectivity to the cloud routing constructs, and that's where we pick up all the encryption visibility, so on and so forth. 
So Aviatrix is focused on orchestrating cloud networking from the VPC and subnet level at the CSP layer up to you know our own Aviatrix data plane, which does that end-to-end -end encryption all the way to on-prem, you know, potentially over a DX or express route or something like that. The, not getting too far into it, but you get end-to-end -end encryption up until we hand off out of basically leave the cloud, if you will. So it offers high performance encryption at, at scales, you know, well past the IPsec limitations that SD-WAN is going to have in the cloud. So in Aviatrix's use case, uh, we multiplex IPsec tunnels and offer that encryption using just a just a couple of gateways, really. Gateways being our you know kind of purpose-built routing uh, forwarding solution. Just just you know per side one or two gateways, and we can multiplex our IPsec tunnels that way. Versus, you know, with SD-WAN routers, you generally, to get to that same performance, you have to scale out, meaning you have to run a lot of routers. And, uh, you know, in the case of, like, SD-WAN, Cisco SD-WAN, we we got to worry about colors and we got, you know, that policy and stuff like that to try to scale that out to come up, overcome those bandwidth limitations. So the other thing is SD-WAN policy and orchestration is focused on solving WAN challenges. So within a cloud... It's not going to be that often that we're going to have multiple providers, 10 different paths. With partners, we do like kind of a little bit like, you know, Equinix or, or Megaport or, or some kind of, what I think what Cisco calls interconnect now, that type of solution. So you have the ability to do that, but within the cloud itself and, and even between clouds, even then you don't have that many options. You're not, you're not building 10 different connections between all the different providers that way. So our concept of being able to use colors and do path uh, analysis and everything, we're, we're kind of losing a lot of that benefit that SD-WAN offers when we move into the cloud, because there's just not that many options to connect things together in the cloud. The cloud is, is kind of very basic on the networking side. And, and the CSP owns the transport, really. I mean, you're not, you're not seeing any of it. You're not owning it. You're not steering it. You're just riding on top of it, and you can't even see it. That's the other thing I wanted to, to mention is that so, so you kind of lose one of the biggest benefits of SD-WAN right out the gate when you move into the cloud and you talk about intercloud or even intra, intra or intercloud networking. The CSP controls everything, so the SD-WAN policy is kind of blunted and lacks just all the options that you have because there's not that many carriers that you, to take advantage of. So it's right, it's cut out. Now, from a cloud problem-solving solution, SD-WAN orchestration, at least right now for the ones that I've tried, is, it's kind of kludgy and the workflow is difficult. And that's because it's adapted from a WAN workflow to fit the cloud. So the solution is trying to fit the cloud in. It wasn't built to be cloud native. The use cases are kind of like, you know, kind of shoot in and kind of adapted and, and pushed to fit the cloud um, use case. The Catalyst 8000V, just, just to mention, you know, again, Cisco, I'm saying Cisco here, but pick a virtual router provider that, you know, took their on-prem router, took the physical router, virtualized it, and threw it in the cloud. Um, you know, it's not a cloud router. It's a VM that's carrying years of technical debt. And it's got a lot of code that's worthless for the cloud, but that, you, you know, customers are still going to have to pay for that. They have to pay for the licensing to cover it. They have to pay for the gigabytes of, of code they're not using that, that still, you know, has to run in the box. And they have to run for the, they have to pay for the overhead of having to run a larger appliance to deal with the architecture. So it wasn't built to be cloud native. I want to point out that outside the cloud, you know, that's not really the case, right? So, so all of your options, features, all of the, 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 the stuff that's baked into, you know, say like, for example, iOS XE in this case, that's obviously has utility and usefulness outside of a cloud environment. So you can use those routers, you can use those abilities to do things. Uh, outside the cloud. It's just that a lot of it is kind of pointless inside the cloud. So again, this is a cloud use case discussion. I want to be very clear, right? We're talking about what is the best option for cloud, right? So it may sound like I'm dragging on SD-WAN here. I, I'm not. I still think SD-WAN is a very good solution for the WAN. And I, I, you know, I didn't change my mind when I left Cisco about that. It's a good WAN use case. So, so let me just you know, back up my pontification here with a little bit of data. So SD-WAN within the cloud is not easy to use because it's adapted. It's kind of shoehorned to the use cases. And that means the workflow and the architecture has to be complex. And so as an example, 
here's the SD-WAN multi-cloud workflow to get a just a simple cloud edge deployment in the cloud. And the workflow is a little kludgy. Um, it's it's getting better. Uh, development fixes all problems, right? Um, but you you're kind of locked into a supported design, a very basic supported design and a workflow that has to basically greenfield a lot of it. Here's the same use case with multiple deployment options and fewer steps on Aviatrix. And be, we can do this because Aviatrix was built to do that. Like, the, you, you know, it's a, it's a spoon doing spoon things, not a fork that we're trying to, like, you know, duck, you know tape around the tines and make it into a spoon, I guess. I, you know, because it's built to that. So, so it can be lean and it can be purpose built. It can, it can immediately address those use cases directly. So it's not adapting the solution, it's, it's doing it. Um, so it's more directly applicable. So my point is that the goals of each solution are very different. And so it's, it's not really necessarily a fair comparison. So I'm, I'm trying to point out that the solutions tackle different problems. If I were gonna go, you know, if I was gonna do a head-to-head -head comparison on on WAN optimization features, I would expect Aviatrix to be crushed by any given SD-WAN vendor in the same way that I feel like Aviatrix crushes SD-WAN inside the cloud. So I'm not, I'm not just talking Cisco, right? I'm talking just pick an SD-WAN vendor. The thing that they were built to do is going to perform better than Aviatrix would you know, in that arena, I guess is the point I'm making, at least right now. I mean, who knows what the future holds, but that I think is a fair statement. You know, we have some options though, because if you're already invested in an SD-WAN, you don't have to follow the sunk cost fallacy of paying more and getting less inside the cloud. The SD-WAN terminates at the cloud edge. So Aviatrix can actually use, can cohabitate with such a deployment and we can use like BGP and we can hand everything off or bring everything in and do everything within the cloud. So so there's, there's room for SD-WAN deployments and so like a, an Aviatrix inside the cloud deployment or a multi-cloud deployment even, to, to work together. So it doesn't have to displace an SD-WAN investment. And you also don't have to go all in on an SD-WAN investment, even though you're losing so much trying to do SD-WAN within the cloud. Um, because the Aviatrix piece is gonna, is gonna leverage, you know, true end-to-end -end visibility and encryption that we just can't get with an SD-WAN deployment right now. And if you're not invested in SD-WAN, Aviatrix can meet you at any CSP private link uh, we have solutions for high performance encryption across those private links. We can meet at the branch with a site, what's called a site to cloud solution, which is just you know IPsec and landing on our transit and immediately on the data plane in the cloud. So you would still own that entire data path um, from a visibility perspective and encryption perspective. So so you know there's options. I guess is the point I wanted to make. Now, I don't want to intend this to become a series of sound bites that look like I'm bad-mouthing Cisco's SD-WAN or anyone else's SD-WAN solution. If there's a takeaway from this shortcut, it's that Aviatrix and SD-WAN aren't really competitors. They're both built to solve wildly different challenges, and they can work together or apart, but from a inside-the-cloud networking perspective, I think Aviatrix is the winner and that, you know, for now, SD-WAN is still the winner kind of traditional WAN connectivity without the cloud. So I hope this has been somewhat helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you completely disagree, if uh, I'm off your Christmas card list or, or whatever. Uh, if you, and, and if you're going to disagree, please just bring some, you know, tell me why. Don't, don't just say, hey, I disagree or you're full of crap. Uh, let me know why you think so. I would love to have a discussion and maybe some things I haven't, haven't thought about. Or um, Although I've, I've been thinking about this for a while, but certainly I'd like to see other people's viewpoints. Thanks for joining me and uh, have a good one.